city volunteers put out the welcome map for visitors to the annual Gem and Mineral Show, and Tucson crosses borders with its own international trade specialist. These stories and more are coming up on the next Tucson City News and Review. and welcome to Tucson City News in Review. If you haven't been in the downtown area lately, let me tell you there's a lot going on. Take a look over my shoulder and you'll see what I mean. Construction crews are everywhere building the line to carry the new streetcar and they're moving fast. By the time you see this video, much of the work shown here will be finished. Some of the construction can't be seen by the public. Here's a rare behind the scenes look at what Tucson's streetcars will call home. This facility is basically to maintain the cars, clean them out after a day's worth of use, and put them right back out on the street. Bruce Woodruff knows this facility inside and out. He says it's designed to hold nine streetcars and with about 50 employees, it will handle the maintenance necessary to keep the cars on track almost 24 hours a day. They will not be in this facility except for a couple hours in the evening after they stop running and then before they start the next morning, which they have to clean them out, spiff them up. Completion of the maintenance and storage facility will bring Tucson one step closer to an exciting new option for transportation. When it comes online, the streetcar will be a major transportation improvement. And there's more. Thanks to the voter-approved Proposition 409, the five-year, $100 million road improvement project starts this July. But if you drive city streets, you may have noticed that miles of road work is already underway. It's all part of the fiscal year 2013 Pavement Preservation Plan, approved last July by Mayor and Council. Under the plan, $20 million will be spent to improve 30 miles of residential, collector and arterial streets within the city. Here's a short list of just a few of the streets where the work has already taken place. a good indication of the state of our city. But to get the full details, over a thousand people came out to the Marriott at Star Pass to hear Mayor Jonathan Rothschild give his second State of the City address. Please welcome City of Tucson Mayor Jonathan Rothschild. For his second State of the City address, Mayor Rothschild made a grand entrance to a packed house. Many good things are happening on Mayor Rothschild's watch, and it's clear that his leadership is making a positive difference in our community. Starting with the economy, Mayor Rothschild highlighted the city's accomplishments over the past year. Last year, we welcomed a number of new businesses to, com to our community. Accelerate, Harris Integration, Curacao, Involta. The speech focused on education health and wellness, public-private partnerships, trust in government, and more. Throughout, the mayor stressed the importance of working together. To sow and show our common bond in how we help one another and how we come together to create our future. Tucson's future, our shared destiny, is our common bond. We must build that future by working together. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your efforts on behalf of Tucson Every Day. Thank you for allowing me the great privilege of serving as your mayor. Thank you. A key point of the mayor's address was that Tucson's location makes it a natural hub for international trade. And now the city has someone on board to turn that idea into a reality. The Mariposa border is the largest port of entry in the state of Arizona. Whether tourists or commercial transporters, an average of 1,500 vehicles cross the border each day. The produce industry, approximately 65 to 70 percent of the produce, the fresh vegetables, winter vegetables that enter the United States, actually come and enter into the United States 
through the Enogales port of entry. The best way to to reach the Arizona market or the American market. Realizing the importance of our relationship with Mexico, the Tucson Mexico Coalition meets monthly to discuss ways to improve economic ties. This coalition helps us be in front of businesses in Mexico that want to do business here in the U.S. We link them with training in, 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 in educational, commercial, international trade with, with, uh, with, because we have alliances with universities and, and other experts in, in, the, in this area. One of these alliances is with the city of Tucson, who recently hired an economic development specialist for international trade. Juan Francisco Padres, a native of Nogales, Sonora, and graduate from the University of Arizona, is ready for the challenge. A former Tucson business owner, Padres has the experience and Mexican ties to help others develop their business in Tucson. So we're inviting our friends in Sonora and Sinaloa and the rest of Mexico to use Tucson, come to Tucson, not only as a shopping destination, but also put your business here. We're reaching out to the community to set up shop here. Working to make this more feasible, Padres is meeting with companies like the Port of Tucson. We, we represent the city of Tucson, the mayor's office. We, we're really here to help you guys facilitate trade with Mexico logistically. Our, it's our, it's an, our best interest as a team to work together. I hope to accomplish a great relationship uh, with our counterparts in Mexico and ultimately increase employment in Tucson that would be extremely beneficial uh, to the region. Considered an inland port, the Port of Tucson is a multifaceted rail facility, receiving and distributing commodities throughout the Southwest. So here, being on this, you know, being along this corridor here, the sun, uh, Sunset Corridor, it gives us a competitive advantage just in timeliness of, of deliveries. Its proximity to the border sets the Port of Tucson apart from foreign trade giants like Texas and California. That's more likely a loaded container. Uh, you know, he also may be picking up an empty. We're going to be working with the Port of Tucson to help them attract businesses to the city of Tucson, uh, help them bring in international companies, uh, distribution suppliers uh, to the region. As Juan Francisco Padres makes plans to use his international connections, it's a local connection that has brought him back to Tucson. Tucson is very special because of its sense of community that you don't have necessarily feel in other large cities. It's unique and it's, it's, it's special and I, I think most people agree with that. Welcome aboard Juan Padres. Tucson is a smart city. In fact, last November, IBM awarded Tucson the Smarter Cities Challenge Grant to help make Tucson even smarter. Wise use of our water resources has always been a priority for Tucson Water and the citizens of Tucson. In fact, over decades, water use by city residents has steadily declined. Now, thanks to a 2013 IBM Smarter Cities Challenge Grant, a team of experts from IBM's global network is collaborating with Tucson Water to take water conservation to a new level. So while the IBM team is here, we've asked them to keep their eyes and ears open for all kinds of opportunities to improve water service delivery, save on costs, and plan for future needs. During a three-week visit, IBM will help Tucson Water leverage data technology to give water customers the ability to monitor their water use and the utility the tools to manage water demand, all in real time. Tucson is already a very sophisticated city with regard to their water system, and they're light years ahead of many cities. However, given that they are in that situation, they're looking at how they continue to stay ahead of the game. Tucson Water was one of only a few water utilities worldwide to be awarded the IBM Smarter Cities Challenge Grant. I think it says two things. I mean, one, I think IBM sees what we can do for the future, that we um, have a lot of opportunities to do things even better. And the other thing that IBM, I think, saw in us, that we've already come through a lot of adversity in terms of managing a, a limited resource, water, in the desert. The value of the IBM grant is estimated at about $400,000.
Finally, I'd like to introduce you to some real gems. No, I'm not talking about glittering rocks and minerals. This story is about volunteers who welcome visitors to one of Tucson's signature February events. It's amazing that we get the chance to come here locally and see this stuff. And this is a traditional Taishin pearl is from the ocean. I love rocks and I love gems, so it's a great way to celebrate my birthday. Tucson is proud to host the annual Gem, Mineral, and Fossil Showcase, which started back in 1955. Today, exhibits fill over 80,000 square feet of the Tucson Convention Center, and the event extends to over 40 shows throughout Pima County. This is all 43 shows, where to find them, what they offer. The city of Tucson does more than provide an event location. It also provides concierge service. Hello, welcome to Tucson. 30 city employees volunteered over 230 hours of their time to welcome visitors into our community. Volunteers are um, enthusiastic and excited to make sure that people can enjoy everything the city of Tucson has to offer. Is it easy, pretty easy to get around from show to show? Yeah, with the shuttle system, it's Good. really nice. The city-sponsored shuttles made it easy for visitors to get around. We're really excited to tell everybody about Gemride. That's the free shuttle we have. It's 15 stops, cover 25 different gem shows and five parking areas. So it's easier than ever to get out and see all the fabulous different shows. I think it's awesome because I think anyone now can find a place to park. They can get on the shuttle and get over there with little or no effort and the ride was smooth and the guy that drove us was nice. And thanks to the Tucson Police Department, traffic was moving smoothly. We have officers that are doing point control at crosswalks at the intersections. Uh, they're monitoring the areas that are going to have a change in the traffic, especially along the I-10 frontage road. The city of Tucson utilized multiple departments to ensure the event was a success. They all have come together with the Gem Show Working Group to make sure that we can meet the needs of the guests and exhibitors that are coming to the city of Tucson. Are you in town visiting? Yeah, from what? Seattle. From Seattle, oh wonderful. We've met visitors from all over the world as far as away as uh, Russia and Afghanistan. The Gem Show even attracted visitors from our very own backyard. We had a ball looking at everything. We've been about two and a half, three hours in there. There's some really nice stuff. The value to us is both the opportunity to showcase our city as the gem that it is, our hospitality, uh, the, the quality of life you can have here. And secondly, the gem show generates millions of dollars into our local economy. My husband bought me two rings today. One is a diamond and one is a mystic topaz. We need to make sure that any guest that, that is visiting here, any customer or client, that, that we are working to exceed their expectations every single time we work with them. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you for being here. Just one more reason why this is a great time of year to be in Tucson. That wraps it up for this edition. I'm Lane Mandel for Tucson 12, and I'll see you next time on Tucson City News in Review.